Remember when we wondered if Joel Embiid was going to be healthy enough? Shannon, was last night more about the Sixers or the Celtics? Well, G <laughs> Jen, you mentioned that the, uh, uh, the 76ers stole that game. No, they stole game one. They beat the brakes off the Celtics last night. That's not stealing. That's, hey, we coming. Oh, man, they coming. We know they coming. Yeah, it's and just sort of the NBA <laughs> cliche that yeah, you go on the road yeah, and steal the game. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Skip, you've been by what with James Harden uh, did or maybe uh, Sunday's game. You stole that when James Harden hit a late three, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. this was no stealing, Skip. They, 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 this was a demolition job. Mm. And they dominated from start to finish. You got Joel Embiid, who wasn't terribly efficient. Yep. But he did what he normally does, is get to the foul line. Yep. Now you get Tyrese Maxey chipping in, giving you 30 big points. James Harden, two, uh, what, two rebounds away from a triple-double. Yep. And you got Tobias Harris chipping in, gave you 16 points. And what normally happens, that great bench that the Celtics possessed, yep. gave you absolutely nothing last mm -hmm. night. Al Horford cannot play the amount of minutes that he played and give you zero points. Derek White has to give you more than seven points. Um, guard, Marcus Smart, Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, combined seven of 22. Yep. Skip, that won't get it done. You can't shoot 40%, allow the other team to shoot 50%, and think you're going to win a ball game. You're not. You get... I, I thought uh, uh, the, the law firm, Tatum and Brown, I thought they played well enough, but nobody else played well last night, Skip. Mm. And when you get Joel Embiid doing what he did, you get Tyrese Maxey, and you get James Harden almost with two rebounds short of a triple-double, mm. you're going to get the kind of performance that you got last night, mm. which was a demolition job. Can the Celtics win two games? It seems to me Joel Embiid is getting healthier by the hour. He took the brace off. He played with a sleeve on. Mm -hmm. That's not a good sign for the Celtics because they got nobody that can deal with him one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And what he's able to do at seven feet, two inches tall is that he can see over the double team, find the wide open guy, and they're knocking down the shots. The Celtics are in trouble. Mm. I don't, and it's, it's puzzling, Skip. The team, the two teams in the East that was most dominant all year. Yeah. One is already jettisoned yep. and the other one's on the ropes. Yeah. The team that looked, the, the Heat, mm, didn't look well the all year. Mm -hmm. Now they're one win away from the conference finals. Mm -hmm. The Lakers didn't really look good all year. They're one win away from the conference finals. And the team that looked the, do the, the dominant, the mm -hmm. most dominant, mm, with the exception of the uh, the Nuggets, mm. Whew, mm. thing shaping up to be something very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Would you agree that all of a sudden it looks like LeBron's got a clear path? No, he ain't got no clear path. No? Huh? I mean, I mean, come on now. They beat the two seed, Memphis. Was that a clear? Josh said they were good. Mm. They good in a way. We worried about Boston. Damn. Okay. I get, they worried about Boston. Guess right. Boston was worried about them. Okay, but that's history. They beat them. Yeah. They're, they're going to beat Golden State. I, I hope believe so. they're going to do it tonight. I hope so. Would you look down the road and say, wait a second, the skies are opening, the heavens are opening for LeBron to win it all? You do realize, like, the Nuggets are the number one mm -hmm. seed for a reason, right? Yep. You do realize they possess the two-time league MVP. Should have been a three P, but mm -hmm. that's neither here nor there. We'll discuss Should've that. At, we'll, we'll discuss that at a later date and time. I don't want to interrupt the normal scheduled program. Yeah. Uh, on that point, all I know is that back in February, I watched every dribble of Joel Embiid versus Nikola Jokic, and Embiid absolutely destroyed him just the way he destroyed the Celtics last night. So, Mr. Sharp, it yes. is my turn. <clears throat> Big picture. I did pick the Philadelphia 76ers before the season started to win the East, and I did say that Joel Embiid is going to be the MVP. Finally, he'll finally break <laughs> through, as he should have broken through a year ago. But that's that's beside the point in okay. another story. Okay. What I saw last night was... I believe the Sixers are just better than the Celtics because in the end, if you really boil it down, the best player on the floor, if he is relatively healthy, and I think he's only relatively healthy, but the best player is Joel Embiid. Right. He's better than Jason Tatum. He's better than Jalen Brown. He's better certainly than Al Horford or Marcus Smarter. We can keep right. going down the line. The Celtics have depth, <clears throat> but I don't think they have more depth than the Sixers do because the Sixers have people sitting on the bench, Montrez Harrell, right. Cork Moss. They're good players. They can't see the light of play because this team is loaded with talent on both ends of the floor. Because when you can bring in a DeAnthony Melton to, to, to play defense, you, you've got a squad. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. So the point is the second best player on the floor on any given night is James Harden. Now, I'm never sure whether he's going to be the worst best player or the, the best player on the floor because Doc said last night 
that he was magical, as in he was a magician, as in he played or called, as Doc said, a perfect game because he is their floor general. Mm -hmm. He has nothing but offensive genius on the perimeter. And even though he doesn't have quite the burst that he used to, he still slithers up in the lane and can get his shot at will whenever he wants it. And he does orchestrate at a genius level. Mm -hmm. It may not look that quick or fast or, or furious as it used to, but it works. And on any given night, when he's in that kind of zone and he's making his three-point shots like he is right here right now, all of a sudden I say, well, the Sixers have the two best players. Right. And now I've been telling you for, I don't know, three months, Tyrese Maxey has arrived as a star. And the difference in the game last night, the essential difference was he made six threes. And if I could show them to you, he's another one of those shooters. And again, I'm not saying he's Steph or Clay, but he's one of those, those young shooters. He, he just has the, the blissful ignorance of every time he launches one, I think it's going in. And I'm going to show you the six that he made here if we could. Six threes. Every time he lets it go, I think that's good because he shoots it with such supreme confidence and he has the energy of of like a playground player or maybe yeah. an open well, court at the Y. Well, you last night. Yeah. And, and he just plays and he plays with such joy and such easy rhythm to his game and and I just love watching him play. I, I, I feed off his energy. He, he, he did that to an all-NBA defensive yep. player in Derrick White. Okay. Once <laughs> he gets in his flow and his rhythm, it, it's like it's like some kid at the Y and you say, he's out of his mind. He's in the zone. We right. can't guard him. Well, he's one of those guys. And his, his energy, it doesn't look like pure energy. It doesn't look like he's supremely gifted. But he's got talent. And you want to talk about Will. Whew. He, he comes and brings it every night on both ends of the floor. And he can be a disruptor on defense. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying, what, what's not to love? Is it not starting? Because I thought, Joel, I know, I know for a fact, I know it for a fact, he's got a small tear in his knee, but he's, he's figured out how to work around it, and now he doesn't want the you-know-what brace right. on his knee because it's bothering him. Yes. He said after, even though you say, what lift does he have to begin with? It, it was psychologically hindering yeah. him because uh. he's saying, I got this thing on my knee, yeah. and I feel like I can't even jump. Mm -hmm. So last night he said, just take it off. It's the same, one way or the other. It's not, it, yeah. it, it, you know, it's not going to protect it anymore or make right. it feel any better. Just warm it up, put a sleeve on it, mm -hmm. and, and we'll be okay. Right. And he goes back. I don't know if he's taking any injections for it during the game. I doubt it. But, no, but, he probably still getting on yeah. the bike, you know, to try to keep it loose because yeah. the last thing you want to do is have it tighten up. Right. So he's probably going back in the tunnel because I see him walk back there okay. quite a All few right. times. So now... I t t so last night, to me, to answer Jen's question, it, it was all about, as I think you agree, it was about the Sixers. Yeah, for sure. But the year has been about the defending Eastern Conference champion Celtics. Right. They don't look the same to me. But I've been told, I first guessed this all year long, they have a new first-year head coach. I don't think they play with the same defensive edge they did under Ime Udoka. <sighs> I, I don't yet, I haven't figured out Joe Mazzulla. All I know for sure is from a distance, I see him at war with the Boston media, and it's not a good look for a first-year head coach no. because it's a distraction for your team. Right. And it's starting to look like they're not trusting him in the key moments to make the right move strategically or lineup-wise. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they're looking at each other with body language that that I, I've seen at, at odd points during the year where... They had some head-scratching losses, right. as we talked about. They right. lost three times to Orlando, twice at home. They lost three times to the Knicks. They right. lost three times to the Cavs. Right. That, not shameful, but I'm just saying, I, I kept saying, oh, the, I, I expected them to, to be a real factor, and they are a real factor, but they're not the factor. I think the thing with, uh, uh, with, with Coach Mazzulla, Skip, is that he inherited this team. He didn't build it. Nope. So I think he wants credit for something that he didn't build. It's kind of like John Gruden and Tony Dungy's old yep. team. Yes, you won a Super Bowl, but that team, you, it's not like you drafted any of those players. You didn't sign any of those players. Those, with the exception, I think, Brad Johnson. With, that's yep. the only change that yep. you made. Yep. But Sapp and Brooks and Lynch and no, Rondé and all there. those guys, they were there. Keyshawn was there. Yep. So he's not going to get the credit. And he should stop trying to, like, Oh, well, they didn't ask me about the adjustments that I made. Yeah. You're supposed to make adjustments. You're the coach. You don't get credit for doing what you should do. 
Yeah, I, I completely concur. So something has been missing, which brings me to Jason Tatum. He is the best player, even though on, on given nights, I think it's Jalen Brown. Right. Every game in this series, Jalen Brown has gotten off to a, a, a frenetic, hot start. Yes. And then what happens? He sort of disappears for the, the last three quarters and doesn't take as many shots. Right. And, and Jalen... Uh, I'm sorry, Jason Tatum gets off to a slow start, and then he comes on like gangbusters. But, but it's, too, it's too late. It's too late. He, he's allowed too much separation to get, to get between yep. the, the Celtics and the Sixers. Yep. I mean, Jalen Brown goes four of six in the first in the first quarter for nine points. Jason Tatum goes zero for five for oh, two for points. Five? Really? And so now you find yourself down 33-26. Yeah. And, and and also, and to get back in it, Skip, he's taken a lot of bad shots. His level of 27, the inefficiency. Yep. Yeah. He got. You look at it like, man, Jason Tatum, man, he had 36 points. Yep. 13 rebounds, five assists. Oh, man, he had a, a, not, two steals. But then you go on over, like, bro, he was 11 of 27. He was 3 of 11 from the... Yeah. So, it's no impact. It's nothing. It's empty calories. I mean, you you look at the stat line, but, bro, y'all got beat. Y'all got beat by 12, and the game really wasn't that close. No. I mean, 12 points... Well, they but... were down 21, and, and it felt like a 20-point game yes. the whole way. Yes. Only the shock troops, like, like little uh, Pritchard comes in. He, yeah. he makes a couple threes. And it started to get slightly interesting at the end, but it was completely misleading on the right. scoreboard. Correct. Okay. So that brings me to Al Horford. I, I still, when I'm rooting against Boston, I still fear him because he can be a deadly clutch shooter. He can right. make big shots because he's made some already in these playoffs. Right. But last night, as you see on your stat sheet there, he went 0 of 7. He, he went to, not war, but he got into it with the Boston reporter, a friend of mine, Duke Castiglione, who asked him about being about elite shooter. He got, I don't know if you saw the clip of this, mm -hmm. and, and he got miffed about, you don't think I'm an elite shooter? And, no. and Duke's like, uh, no, not an elite shooter. You're a good shooter, but you're not elite. No. And, and now, ever since that happened, it was a couple of games back, he has not been even remotely well, it, an elite but shooter. I, I, plus, Skip, I think the thing what really hurt him last night is that he let Joel and B get off to such a great start, it, affect, it impacted him on the other end because he can't do anything one-on-one -on -one with Joel on the defensive end, and so now it impacts... Because normally, like, guys get it going defensively, they get it going offensively, yeah. and vice versa. Where he's struggling on the defensive end, yeah. and his shot is reflective, 20-plus okay. minutes and zero points. You can't have a starter play that. I get it, Skip, if it's a fill-in guy, he hadn't been in, normal, in a starting role, he's thrust into the starting lineup in the playoffs. But Al Horford is a 16-year vet, he, I think 16, maybe even longer than that. And he's been in these games. He's been in the uh, yeah. com uh, uh, conference finals and and uh, and he this, this, uh, the uh, the NBA finals yeah. just last year. He was. So there's no excuse yeah. for his level of, of horrid uh, play yeah. in last night's game. Okay. So it's going to be Jason Tatum or Bust because he just takes way more shots than anybody on this team. He takes way more three point shots than anybody on this team. Eleven more and than Brown. That, that's correct. Well, so far, yeah. Uh, in, in the playoffs, he's taken 27 more than any other teammate. But so far in this series, what's he shooting? Uh, he's 11 of 36. That's 31%. It's just not good enough. Right. And it wasn't good enough last night because he was 3 of 11. Well, he's definitely not shooting that good from the field because there have been a lot of 11 of 27. There have been some 9 of 26s and, and things yeah. of that nature. But I just think the thing is, Skip, is that maybe he's trying too hard to get off to the great start. And he's putting, because remember, what, Sunday, Skip, he missed his, what, first seven, eight shots? Gets it going. I think he finished, like, eight of 11 on his last, uh, last 11 shots. Yeah. But the damage is done. You've got to, you've got to somehow coax them out of going to Joel Embiid. Yeah. Because right now, they're letting Joel Embiid set the tempo. He, they go inside, they feed him, they foul him, he, yep. they slow the game down, and the Celtics want to get up and down, get up a bunch of threes. Yeah. Well, you can get up a bunch of threes, but if you're not making any of them, they getting consistent twos with Joel yeah. Embiid finishing at the foul line. P.J. Tucker, everywhere he goes, good things happen. Now he's a sixer for the first time this year. And all of a sudden, they're playing some hard-nosed defense. Yep. And all of a sudden, and we'll get deeper into this later, but the reason I favor Embiid over Jokic is he's just such a commanding presence at the rim on defense because oh, yes. he is so big and long and, and can play Nasty, tough basketball. And four more blocks. It, yeah, four more blocks. Could we see those blocks, please, from last night for Joel Embiid? And they changed this game because they were intimidating. Marcus Smart, get Marcus that Smart, out of come here. on, really? Come on, really? And then here we go. Which? Yep. 
another one. Try that. No. And then Jason Tatum. No. And then we got a chase down here, which goes all the way end to end. Look at Joel run. Look at him run. Look at him run. And he got that one. He tried to put on LeBron. That's a goat. They call that the goat. That's seven feet, one inches doing that. You don't think he can run? Yeah. yeah I, he, he run the floor? Wow. I think he realized the moment. We're, we're seeing like, okay, man, this might be my best opportunity to get to and win an NBA. Because everything, see, yeah, I'm dinged a little bit. Yeah. Arden is healthy. My, Max is playing well. That's correct. And, man, all I got to do is say, if, I, if all y'all give me this effort right here, I ain't going to show any other play, Skip. The only play I'm going to show is what I you just showed, that I last agree. one. I totally if y'all give me this effort right yep. here, we'll be NBA champs. Yep. That's all I need. Okay, I agree. And I love what Joel keeps saying because he won't even talk about the MVP. They ask him about blah, blah, did you live up to being MVP? He said, I don't want to talk about MVP. What we did tonight doesn't matter because we have to do it again. Because right. they do. Right. And if they don't do it again at home, they're going to have to go back in there. And I wouldn't love their chances right. of doing what they did last night again in a game seven. It may come to that. Yeah, I don't know yet. But the point is that they showed you who they could be. They flexed for you last night. Mm -hmm. And in the big picture... I, I think they're at least as good as Boston is defensively, and I just think they're better offensively because Embiid is just going to get to the foul line. It's well, hard to keep him from scoring free throws. Yep, the Celtics might be better on ball at defending when you look at Smart, when you look at a Derek White, when you look at a Jalen Brown and a Jason Except Tate. for Tuck. Except for Tuck, so, yeah. But if you right. look at rim protection... Mm -hmm. If Joel Embiid is anywhere around the paint, ain't nothing getting in. It's just scary because the last shot, the, the, the game back, yeah. was, was Jason Tatum in overtime. He right. drives it, and at the last second, he sees it. He, he sees the Loch Ness monster yeah. come in, and he just sees that thing up above right. the water, and right. he's like, uh oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I should do this. And he tries to kick it across court. He's to either blocking Smart. the shot or challenging it so much he's altering the shot. And so that's that's really the difference because, like you said, yeah, Tobias Harris is okay, but when you just but look last at last night, he was good. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Uh, like that's wasn't he seven of ten? Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm saying uh, as a defender, yeah, oh, no, yeah, yeah. Oh, he, yeah, was, yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was really good at, yeah. uh, on the offensive end. Yeah. Plus 12, 16 points. Okay, so they're defending at for them a high level. Yeah, the Doc has been on something of a high hot seat because do his teams defend at a high level? Well, this one is. Mm -hmm. I like the mix. I like the flow. I like the bench. I like everything about this team. They're, they're playing a very good and very deep team, but I think they showed you last night they're just a little better. It's still a three-point shooting contest, but if if Tyrese Maxey at home can make six more threes, the Celtics are going to have a hard time winning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> if if, if Maxey gives you 30, they're not winning because yeah. they're not about to hold Joel Embiid to, like, 12 points. No. What's the likelihood you hold him, Skip? To like the teens. It, it's hard to hold him to 12 points from the free throw line. Exactly. He shot another he, level last night. Yeah, okay. 10 okay. of 11. And, and he's going to make, he, he's just going to make yeah. 10 of 11. He's right. going to shoot around 90% from the free right. throw line. And if he throws in three threes, because they just dare him to shoot threes. Right. And I'll be honest, I don't love him shooting right. threes. But when he makes one, it is psychologically crushing for right. the opposition because it's like, God, right. stood out. Jokic will make them every right. once in a while. And you're like, because you dare those guys, right. the seven-footers, okay, right. go ahead, take it. Because, look, you, we know he's going to make some. Let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip, he make eight to ten field goals, two-pointers. That's 20. He's going to the free throw line about 12 times. He makes 10 of those. That's 30 right there. That's exactly now, what he did in the regular <laughs> season. He made 10 of 12 on average. So okay. now he throw, you throw in one three. That's 33. That's what he averages. That's what he had. He had three of those last night. And if you make three of those, y your odds are going up. Yeah. Of, so you let him make 12, 13, 14 field goals, two pointers. Yeah. And you let him get to the free throw line. Now you're talking about guys just getting into the high 30, maybe even 40s. So now you're coming around on my Sixers, it sounds like. I mean, they're, they're, they're playing well. Yeah. I, I, yes, I'm impressed with the Sixers. Yeah. But am I more impressed with the Sixers am I, uh, uh, as I am disappointed in the Celtics? I think the disappointment in the Celtics, for me, okay. I mean, right. I know you, you picked the, uh, uh, the Sixers at the beginning of the year. They're playing well. But, Skip, you got to be disappointed with what you've seen from the Celtics. I am. They just don't look right to me. They don't look the way they did last year when they destroyed Kevin Durant. Right. That team? And remember, Skip, they were down 3-2 to, to Milwaukee, going to Milwaukee for game six. They were. They impressed me. And then 
if Jason Tatum had just been able to hang on to the basketball against Golden State, they would have won the series. But he Probably. wound up, remember, he had, for the whole playoffs, he had 100 turnovers. Yeah. He had 27 more turnovers than his teammate Jalen Brown. Brown did in the playoffs last year. He is cleaning that part up. But he's still not making enough shots. But they, they're, they're still the cheap. I mean, they probably because they hold the ball more because they only had eight turnovers. Skip, it wasn't a turnover fest no. last night. No. Uh, the Sixers uh, only had nine. But Tatum, Brown, and Smart had seven of the eight turnovers. But you're not surprised by that because the ball are primary in those guys' hands. Yep. I like the Sixers. Are you are you, are you ready to say the Celtics are done? It ain't looking good. Okay. It ain't, it ain't looking I'll good. Take that. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe you need to call the priest in and, 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 and you know, have the last, yeah. Okay. Just, go ahead and make peace. Go okay. ahead and make peace with what you've already done on this earth. Well, maybe they need an exorcism. <laughs> right? uh, they need something. Yeah. Maybe they need Larry Bird to be Offer like 26. Up some last rites. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, TD Garden certainly was lifeless last night, gentlemen, unless you count all the booze. This series now switches back to Philly with the Celtics on the brink of elimination. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.